Hey guys, welcome back to another Weird Wednesday. I'm Ashers and this is Pat O. Pat O, how was your weekend? My weekend was all right. Uh, I finally got over being sick. Yay! This is the longest, most drawn out fucking plot line or meta topic this show has ever explored. <laughs> this Pat's yeah. fucking head cold. Uh, <laughs> was not COVID. I, don't, I can't, I, I think I took two to three COVID tests over the course of this uh, mini series that we had. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this this was worse than the time Timmy got stuck in the well on passions. I'm just gonna say that for everybody that's like over the age of 35 that remembers that. This is um, yeah, the, this storyline is definitely canon. So yeah, we we didn't jump the shark. We fucked the shark midair. Uh, but yeah, so it's it was it was like bronchitis. I, I'm on steroids now and it's fucking awesome and like uh, it's good. So we're we're done done fucking talking about this. It's it's back to work. Everything's fine um so at least until that. you get sick again i don't know <laughs> yeah i mean it's still we're still in the middle of a pandemic in the midwest so who knows but uh no i had my daughter's 10th birthday so um yeah doing that shit we went we had a tea party and we went to one of um honestly i mean it's a little too late in the game now because i'm married but like man what a what a it's, we went to this thing where like you go and uh you pick like a ceramic thing off the wall and then you paint it oh yeah i know about that Oh my God, that's a fucking panty dropper that's right it. there. That's right. And then Saturday night, and this is this is little pets the the Wednesdays we talk we are dating corner for the for you for our single listeners out there. I'm about to give you some invaluable fucking dating advice. If you are single, <laughs> if you are single, do this on a Saturday night, and you will be single no more. Hobby Lobby is swarming with pussy on Saturday night. All right. Now, granted. Yes. It's kind of like a weird religious place, which I had no idea about. My wife had to explain it to me. But um, I'm telling you, it was we went in there to get some poster board for her to put this giant puzzle together. And it was wall-to-wall snatch all over the fucking place. All thick girls, all all very nerdy and cute looking, but well put together. They look very artistic, very crafty. If you want yourself a club girl, you got to go to the club. But if you're looking for like a kind of bookish, nerdy girl to like, you know, binge watch TV with, that probably is very well read. And has a little creative spark in her Hobby Lobby on a Friday night. You could not go wrong. Is it Friday night or Saturday night? Saturday. I don't know about Friday night. I guess I got to figure that out this week. But no, Saturday <laughs> night. Don't, don't don't quote me on the Friday night scene. I haven't I haven't made that made that party yet. But I can vouch for the Saturday night party. It is fucking <laughs> off the chain. So. Sounds like you had a great, exciting, uh, very fun weekend. <laughs> yeah, it was all right. <laughs> It was all right. What about well, you? I, what, what you uh, well, you know, it was okay. I mean, we had Joe. I had Joe Bob Knight, and um, as we discussed pre-show, you photographed very well this weekend. Oh, thank you, thank you. Yeah. yeah, I dressed up as an alien with a red head coming out of its head, and um, <laughs> not really. I just I didn't know what to, I was like. I kind of want to dress up, but like I kind of because it's Joe Bob's Halloween hood on it. You know, I have p- people come over and we hang out, whatever. Um, and so I was like, I'll just throw on my alien shirt and it'll be great. But thank you, no, I look great. Um. God, what else did they do what yeah, movies I, did they do go back to joe uh, bob thing. oh yeah, yeah yeah so joe bob did um they did a movie called angel which i had never seen that movie was awesome that was a, that was fucking great um so uh, watch angel and then they also did terror train which is a, a classic it's got jamie lee curtis and um i i had never watched it to be honest with you i've heard of it but i never watched it and uh i did not watch it because i ended up drinking too much and i <laughs> i threw up it oh so that's funny. right yeah I threw we up. I, about I, that. I, I don't throw up very often when i drink um but you know i kind of like i kind of like it when i do so like i was sitting here and and at that point um usually everybody leaves you know by the time you hit the second movie but but um actually i was hanging out with our our buddy uh the reverend um crimson nicholas oh nice and yeah, he he came and hung out, and uh, you know, I look over at him, and I was like, "Hey, uh, I think I might pass out during this movie, but like, you can hang out and finish the movie." And he's like, "Oh, okay." And then I was like, "I think I might puke," and he's like, "I shall leave." <laughs> he didn't offer to to hold your hair back or anything. <laughs> no, I mean, I'm an adult; I can handle it, you know. And so I did. I went and puked, and I immediately felt better. You know, that's the only thing about it. It's like I never get drunk, and then like to that point and stay puking like i nobody cares about this but i'm telling you guys but i'll puke and then like i feel better and then i i didn't have a hangover the next day i didn't even drink that much i don't even yeah. know what 
Like, so I had no hangover. I was cool. I was good to go. And then I just, I don't know. I just did regular stuff. With, I had my kids this weekend. So we just, you know, yeah, hung puking, out. Some, puking sometimes becomes a necessity because it's like, look, and you're better off doing it at night than the next day. Because yeah. if you do it at night, then you do it. You're already drunk. You're already out of it. Like, what? And then you just go to sleep, right? And then you wake up and it's a new day. And you're already gross anyway. So it's like you just take a shower and then boom. You're good or if you're like, if you're raging, and you puke, you just hit the reset button button on the party machine, and you can keep going now. Yeah, gotta... right. <laughs> so but I, I mean, nothing... as, well, as someone that was pregnant and puked a lot, a lot, I lost weight during my a lot of weight during my pregnancy because I couldn't eat anything and I kept puking all over the place. I became an expert puker. So, <laughs> part, what, are, what are you good at, Asher?s I'm really good at puking. Um, <laughs> so... <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> No, it's it's not that bad. A lot of people hate it. It's not that bad. This is a gross conversation. I'm sorry. Um, but it, it was shocking to me. It was shocking because, like I said, I really didn't drink that much. I mean, I was drunk, but I wasn't that drunk. And, like, it just, just doesn't happen, happen very often. So yeah, anyway. sometimes it just doesn't sit right, you know. You know, that was that, the highlight of my. <laughs> that night after me and you hung out, I should have, like, the early morning after, like, I should have puked and I didn't. And I condemned myself to a day of being, like, just hungover and miserable. Whereas yeah. if, if I had, like, thrown up in the bushes, like, when I left your apartment and then hopped in that Uber and just went away, I mean, I would have been, like, completely fine. You know, because you're not carrying it around with you. Like, it's out. You were, you were you very know, drunk. Do you remember? <laughs> Maybe you don't remember. Do you remember texting me about about giving your uber driver a soggy biscuit no <laughs> but i mean it was that, that, that fits my mo you know I'll say that. It was some dude. i don't remember exactly what you were talking about you were just like i think you asked i think you were like should i ask this guy if he wants a soggy biscuit <laughs> <laughs> or something. I was like, oh my god just go to go go, go to your room go to bed <laughs> so i did I crashed on that pull out couch god <laughs> It was funny as well. What's uh, um, what? I probably should ask this off there, but what? But I guess it doesn't matter. The listeners would want to know too. Is that is CryptoCon happening? Did we ever get to the bottom of that? No, yeah, CryptoCon is still happening. I mean, okay, so it was know. it was the it was last year's date change that got everybody thrown for a loop. I'm almost positive. I mean, you know, the I don't I don't know if the par- paranormality issue has come out because they allegedly wrote an article. We've been talking about that in Clubhouse. Maybe that's right. where you heard it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, we had talked know, about it before, like last sh- when we recorded last episode and then you we were like, "Oh no, that's it's from last yeah, year." From last and then Aaron year, yeah. got in the room and said that he thought that it was that it, uh, it could have been canceled. I haven't yeah. heard anything official, period. I mean, so I'm just going to, you know, I'm going to continue to assume that you know it's it's one of those things uh my buddy danner um contra dust design he uh won the contest for the t-shirt design for crypticon so you can buy one of danner's t-shirts well with, with danner's design on it he helped write the uh mothman learns the abc's book uh, alongside uh mothboy matt from the mothboys podcast um so a lot of really cool people involved with CryptidCon. uh if you don't have your tickets already they're not sold out i think it's november 19th through the 21st um, it's the weekend before Thanksgiving. I know that much. Right. As of right now, it's still happening. So um, it's in uh, it's in Kentucky, and and Lexington, Kentucky. Those shirts are going to look boss as fuck right on top of a uh, Wednesday We Talk Weird fanny pack. I'm just letting you know. You know what? I have big news. I don't think you know. Oh, my God. I have big news. Somebody bought a fanny pack. Yeah, I did. You bought a fanny pack? Yeah, somebody, I told no, you. No, no, no. Oh, yeah, that's right. You did. No, no, no. Somebody else bought a fanny pack. Oh, <laughs> Someone else bought a fanny. Pictures are coming. I know who it is. Uh, oh, you know who? Yeah. Okay. I'm not, I'm not going to share who it is yet. But yeah, people will know. There's going to be pictures, and I'm going to I'm going to share them. Um, but it, it I just found out today. Made my fucking day. I'm so excited about it. So yeah, somebody bought a fanny pack. But buy more fanny packs. Buy more um, t-shirts and and things like that. Also, Pat is selling the official um, movie car and cooler. So. <laughs> You can buy those as well. <laughs> I'm coming I mean, up with all kinds of uh, creative merch ideas. Right. To, it's, uh, oh, it's great. It's, you're right. doing a great job. <laughs> so, um, you know, but also, you know, there's, uh, of course, once again, you know, we have um, introduced now the on, on Wednesdays we talk weird call line. So you can call and you can share your stories. You can call and you can suggest show topics you can call and you can talk about um you know how much maybe you hate our theories or you can you know give us evidence whatever the fuck you want to call about just call just call the line it's uh 773-59 weird i um 
don't know what numbers those actually are, but it, you know, it's on the phone. Dial it. I mean, it's free. Just do it. Just call the number and uh, say whatever you want. I don't, I don't care. Um, tell me about how much you hate fanny packs. I don't know. I mean, there's got to be a reason why you guys aren't buying them. So let me know why. Well, it sounds like we are. So the, 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 Some, people are now starting to catch on to the. <laughs> wait till the pictures drop. I already I have one picture that I really want to take with it, but I. I, I need my my wife to be the photographer for it, and she okay. probably won't because, she, like, I have a whole, I have a whole different, like, I almost want to, like, reach out to Sarah Cooper with this one because this is, like, marketing genius. I have a whole different way to sell these fucking fanny packs that no one's oh thought God. about. Oh, God. I, well, I'm excited to see it. I can't wait. Yeah, um, I have to have her take the picture for me, but she's probably going to be like, I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> we'll, we'll see. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. But I mean, we, we we get these things in a whole different like, you know, it's like, OK, so when I worked at public relations, I'm going on a weird tangent right here. Uh, I had a company, uh, a sauerkraut company that we worked for. And they were like they came to us and they said, listen, we're already the biggest sauerkraut company in the world. So we're not trying to, like, get more people to buy our sauerkraut than the other people's sauerkraut. Like it's already like lines of, uh, have already been established. What we need to do is get people to use sauerkraut in ways they're not already using it right like 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 activate that kind of consumer base <laughs> just okay continue <laughs> so that's what i thought with this fanny pack i mean it's not like we, we got a bunch of other podcasts trying to sell you fanny packs right now if you're listening to podcasts and you want fanny packs you're coming to us that's already but what we need is people that maybe don't want fanny packs but they want a a belt with a like like the fanny pack but not sell it as a fanny pack sell it as something else <laughs> okay wait a minute so is this true like really you worked for a sauerkraut company i mean what? Well, I, worked for, I worked at public relations and one of our clients was a sauerkraut uh company and Are what they- we did what we did was we got we got these people to fucking pretend like martinis are really good with sauerkraut stuffed olives and we, we did this whole bullshit fucking like nightclub campaign in chicago and it got it on fucking good morning america when like one of their like you know oh new drink thing like it was like one of those little segments that they do where they where they where they talk about like four or five different type of cocktails and we were one of them with the sauerkraut martinis. No, oh you, you can fucking look it up. I swear to God, I'm looking up sauerkraut martinis. Yeah, I Big Frontier was the company name. <laughs> Me and Steve London. Although my name probably won't be on as much as Steve London's will be, but yeah. you can also you can look at Big Frontier and you can see I handle most of the the tech companies. Like the uh, my big client was this uh, Concourse Communications. They did. Um, they they were the first company to install uh, Wi-Fi hotspots in airports. This is back in like 2004. This is a long fucking time ago. But yeah, anyway, that's well, whatever. Well, listen, if you need a place to store your sauerkraut, and on Wednesdays we talk weird, Fanny Pack is the perfect thing for you, okay? You can just have your sauerkraut wherever you want. Nobody's going to judge you for it. Well, everybody will judge you for it, but I won't. So, um, you know, that's all that matters. But Or, or if you're out cruising. Speaking you of, wanna, of <laughs> you wanna make sure everyone has everything they need back there, you know, Including our crowd. <laughs> just whatever you want in your toolkit, accessible <laughs> from the back. Well, anyway, speaking of uh, things that are, um, you know, um, you know, I don't know, things. Speaking of things, um, so on Clubhouse, <laughs> we've actually had a lot of really great fun on Clubhouse. Clubhouse has gotten. It's it's getting so big. We had a very successful room the other night, which was kind of an impromptu thing that I just kind of opened up and was like, hey, let's do a room on favorite pieces of evidence. And we had some really, really fucking cool people come in um, and share some awesome stories. So, you know, check that out. Get on the Cryptozoology Club on Clubhouse. It's free. You don't even need an invite anymore. But um, Aaron, our buddy Aaron from from, uh, Hey Strangeness, whether we did the West Virginia Cryptids episode with he um he opened up a room about the chupacabra and it was just about the you know different um uh versions of the chupacabra you know you've got the texan chupacabra and you've got the uh you know the reptilian alien the puerto rican chupacabra and uh he has now started a movement to change the name of the texas chupacabra and uh i'm on board i'm 100 percent on on board with this um i the chupacabra is not a canine it's not a canine with mange like that's not what it is it's a it's an alien you know so let's let's change the texas chupacabra so he's, he's got he's gonna have a poll going on it's gonna be going through uh paranormality magazine um if you don't know them check them out they're everywhere on social media 
Uh, I don't know when that poll is going to open officially, but I know we've been gathering names. So if you have name suggestions, I believe, well, you might not still have time to get them in. I don't know. Um, but uh, I suggested Beef Walker. So um, that, that was my name suggestion. Scab Walker is doing pretty good. Um, but there's rumor that like it's already called the Blue Dog. I, I don't know. So I don't know. We want to change the name of the Texan Chupacabra. So uh, jump on board with that. Get your votes in. Like I said, I'll put it out there. Um, go vote for your favorite name, and and hopefully we we make it something else. So sure, you know. And we kind of discuss like how do you even do that? I guess you just do it. Like you just do it. You just start telling people. You just start calling it that. When people call it Chupacabra, you're like, no, that's the beef. Walker. I think I, mean, I think the precedences for cryptozoology are, are still being set in the present day. We're kind of writing history as we go right now. This is all fairly new it is so, right you know, so and, I think, and for better or worse uh you guys are the next generation of people to to follow this shit so you know well, you're you're kind of <laughs> you know you're 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 making up as you go which is good <laughs> we, we're allowed to do that yeah yeah so, yeah so that's neat anyway um so there's that um I also wanted to talk about something for a minute that I I found something out today that was extremely upsetting um and and this is the first time that i'm saying anything about it at all but you guys probably have already have seen my post because we're again it's time travel we record on monday it comes out on wednesday whatever um so i i was once with an organization called parachills uh, pat i'm sure you're familiar with me talking about them sometimes uh -huh. um you know i i started off as the managing director for their 40 and studies department which i thought was really cool parachill parachills is an international um, paranormal investigation team um, and then I, I was asked to become the uh, the chief operating officer for a time being and I did and we had a lot of creative differences so I did not do that anymore um, but eventually I left so right when I left and that had happened um, the man that that uh, runs parachills kind of up and disappeared and had a weird breakdown on social media well I found out today let me tell you something about that man uh, his name is, is well, he goes by Chris Edgecomb on social media, but it turns out his name is actually Christopher John Austin. Um, that man is now spending five years in prison for molesting a child and all kinds of stuff, possessing child pornography, um, all kinds of things. I mean, I, I'll, I'm gonna, definitely going to share the article. So again, <clears throat> you guys might have already read it. So um, I, I'm officially, I want absolutely nothing to do with Parachills as a company. And what I've found out since then is that there are people within that company that knew that this is what happened and have decided to maintain that the man is innocent, decide to cover it up and decide to act like this was not, um, this is not a big deal. And that's absolutely fucking disgusting and shame on you people for doing that. Um, and you're going to, people are going to know who the fuck you are. I can promise you that because that's just gross because if you can turn your back to something like that, then you're just as fucking guilty. So there's that. Um, and I just wanted to make a, a statement about it online that again, I, or, you know, just out there for everybody to know that I won't sit by and act like this is fine. Cause it's not fine. Um, so yeah, anyway, that was, that was my soapbox for this episode. <laughs> just thought Man, I'd you some that. fucked up friends. Oh, uh, the, uh, these people are not my friends. <laughs> no, I know, I know. You know, but it, it's hard because how do you? How, I, I, the more, I guess, the more people you uh, associate with, the more organizations you're involved with, the more likelihood there is that this kind of stuff is going to happen. You know, absolutely, what I mean? because, and this stuff, and this kind of stuff does happen, and it, it shouldn't yeah. happen, but it does. And it's your actions going forward once you know that it did that really are important to me. Like, yeah, Chris is fucking disgusting for doing stuff like that, but the people trying to hide the shit is even more disgusting because it's not like they're getting paid to run parachills. It's not like there's any benefit. They could go start their own fucking thing, but for their own greedy gain, they're turning a blind eye to fucking child abuse, and that's gross that's even worse i think so yeah know. you know but uh yeah no you're right i mean the more people you associate with you know you're you're gonna have some bad apples and and uh you know i'm gonna just throw that shit away like no thank you that's not uh, right you know that's that's not what i'm here for and uh, see that's why when these when these weirdos pop up on your radar you need to get every fucking thing you can out of them as soon as possible before this shit blows up you know what i mean like you should have had this guy sending you video equipment and 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 audio equipment and fanny packs and bitcoin like <laughs> when when these fucking weirdos show up just start ringing the cash register drawer get everything you can out of them that way when this ship you know 
Well, I mean, of course, I didn't know that he was this weird. You know, right. I didn't. Know no, that that's was. why you just just assume. As- just assume <laughs> that everybody's that just, a bad they're, they're going to get me too eventually, and <laughs> just you know, yeah, get them your. You're right. You're not wrong about that. Um, I mean, I see what you're saying, but I'm just I'm I'm a decent per. At least I try to be a decent person. You know, because this guy was funding a lot of stuff. I mean, like I don't want to I don't want to turn this into a, a five minute thing about him, but like you're right. This guy was throwing a lot of money around the scene, and he was financing a lot of operations. And it, it, he was somebody that you you would want to be associated with number one because of his connections, but also number two, because he was he was bankrolling shit. He wasn't just fucking talking shit. He was he was he was spending money on stuff. Yeah, you know. And you know. Uh, when you come across, like, <laughs> go back to my fucking point earlier, we should uh, you know, I don't think we properly milked this person. Uh, it's kind of a weird way to put it, but. Um, no, I didn't. You can't, I, I, you can't take anything from him. Now, if anything from him came in the mail, you'd have to return it. Yeah, I didn't you know. get anything. I didn't get anything yeah. at all. You know, yeah, well. so I, I never asked for anything, but I didn't do it because of that. I did it because I believed in the company. Right. You know, and and so I just, you know, karmically. We could have got know, some GoPros out of it. God damn it. <laughs> I, I, listen, I thought about this. I know. I know you're right. Um, you know, maybe somebody else will out there will be like, oh, she's a good person. I'll buy her some GoPros. I you go. Well. We should, I want to go pro too. I've always wanted one. I'm just saying, you guys, I have an Amazon wish list. Um, I will put it out there. But no, uh, no, I'm, I don't, I don't do it because I want anything. I'm, I'm, jo- I'm joking. But uh, no, you're right. I mean, you know, this, this was a bad person, and you know, and at the end of the day, they're always going to be a bad person, and I'm just not having it anymore. So right. Um, you no, know, you and, do the right thing. And I, right and I feel like, you know, some people might see this as talking shit, and I don't want it to seem like that. Fuck either. that, the dude's a better ass. Who gives a fuck? Right. You know what I mean? Like, like, well, right. I just people are like, oh, they just like drama. No, 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 no. It's that these kinds of people deserve uh, to be fucking. It's got drama when you fuck a kid. That's like criminal and, right. and terrible. Exactly. And it's next exactly. level stuff. There's no. So right. So I mean, it's not something as simple as drama. Like there is a line. It's not like this guy was Roman yeah. Polanski. All right. Well, Roman Polanski's not a good guy either. I know. I'm just saying, though. <laughs> I'm just saying, like. <laughs> and everybody was just like, well, whatever. <laughs> he's, he's Roman Polanski. You can do what he wants. No, he can't. No. No, he can't. If you're a fucking pedophile, no, you can't. It's just exactly. Anyway. Um, but anyway, so that, that's, that was it. That was all I had to say. Um, but I do have some news. Uh, not a bunch of news, but I do have um, something. I got, some, I I got oh. some news, too, but let's hear yours first. Oh, you want to hear my news first? Yeah. Okay. Wonderful. So, um, this website had uh, came out with something interesting. This website, it's called Mystery. Uh, I'm sorry, it's called MysteryPlanet.com. Mm-hmm. Um, they ended up presenting this letter that was allegedly sent to uh, ufologist Stanton Friedman, Friedman back in 2010. And um, you know, but again, they're just now kind of coming out with this letter. And uh, anyway, um, it was written by a guy named Sean. We don't know his last name. <clears throat> his his father well so we do know his last name but it's blacked out on the letter um his father was allegedly uh part of the uh, 414th fighter group and his dad has disclosed to him in 1976 um that he was present and he no, he wasn't present but he had seen the space debris that was uh gathered up from the roswell crash and it's just very interesting that we still even now like you know roswell happened in 1947 i mean pretty much everybody that was involved with that is is dead now or dying you know um Mm -hmm. it's interesting that we're still seeing people who are popping up with these stories and even though this was allegedly from 2010 um you know some of the claims i thought were really neat so he says that the uh the alien bodies which you know were basically described as any other gray alien or whatever um, but they weren't actually bodies. They were bioengineered robots that were actually a physical part of the ship. And I thought that was really cool mm-hmm. um, because that's a theory that we have is that yeah. these things are, you know, piloted by not actual beings. But Yeah, the greys are just drones, basically. Right. And so that, you know, kind of, you know, gives a little water that I, to that idea. What they thought happened was maybe the ship was struck down by lightning. So that's interesting. Um, but nothing else really new. I mean, just, you know, recounting the story of you know possible you know roswell and uh eventually we'll cover that as well on the show i'm sure and we need to you know at some point but um i thought that was pretty neat that was really the only thing i had this week uh did you see what i just texted you no texted you so i i, I had heard about this but there was a ufo sighting in chicago over the weekend okay and i caught a video of it yeah. um I'm pulling it up go ahead and, and I asked, it. 
Yeah, I texted you the link to the coast to coast story, which is probably what I'll what I'll put on Twitter. Um, and really, there was just a uh, an object spotted. It was very much a UFO. It was an unidentified flying object um, spotted over Chicago. It not necessarily disc shaped. It's kind of a funky, weird, um, like a. a it looks like a, a, not necessarily like a humanoid, but like just a piece of machinery that's kind of floating in the air and, um, which could make it a drone or, or something that, or something hanging off a drone. Uh, it's very peculiar looking. You really just got to check it out for yourself. It's a minute video. It's a pretty good quality video, which makes me think that it's not faked. Uh, but it, it could de- definitely be me- something misidentified. Um, it, it doesn't seem to be supernatural or anything. But, no, uh, I did see this. I, I, I'm pretty sure you sent it to me last week, weekend, sometime. Somebody sent this to me. I, I didn't send it to you because oh, I saw it and I was like, I saw the picture and I was like, ah, that looks all right. And then Coast to Coast just uh, covered the story today. So I was like, well, shit, if they're picking up on it now, we, we might as well mention it. It'll seem irresponsible if we don't with me being from Chicago and all. <laughs> That's true. You know what I mean? Like there's fucking a, 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 a sighting in my backyard. And I'm like, well, I'm not going to talk about that. You have an so, obligation. No, I feel right. like I do as a little bit of a, a, a 14 journalist. So, yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, check it out. You know, so it, it is interesting. Um, it is a very interesting video. The but I don't know, man. They sound high as fuck. So I. Oh, I, that's I, right. You, now I remember. I did send this to you because that's exactly what you said when I sent it to I you. Said, the first they time. sound really, really high because they're giggly and weird. But I mean, whatever. I mean, that's new high people there. see UFOs too the object yes they do the object in the sky is weird looking it's it it's, is. it's like a i mean it kind of looks like a fucking like a boom mic like it it because it, it's just like a stick with like another stick sticking off of it <laughs> it looks like a piece of yeah it looks like a, a piece of machinery or some it of equipment of some sort right it, you know the only thing, you know what i want to describe it as if you if you're if you're a neon genesis evangelion fan when when the angel shows up that's like weird geometric shapes it looks like that like it, it doesn't look like it doesn't look like a humanoid it doesn't necessarily look like a craft it looks like a floating collection of attached geome- uh, like geometric shapes right and like you know i i see the theory that it's a drone or a balloon i've never seen a drone that looks like that no. um a, a balloon mm, no because it looks very solid right i don't think it's a balloon either there's no like at least with balloons like not saying like balloons are plasticky right or like you know rubbery i mean it would have to be it just the material doesn't look like that at all like it's not shiny at all it's not you know but it's moving um but it's just strange it is something strange so definitely check it out um Mm -hmm. you can post that on your twitter and you know share it i would love to i don't care you know it's, it's very neat and then you guys can if you have thoughts on this or the guy who came up with the uh the letter or you know this weird letter that that surfaced i mean what do you what do you think about it what do you think about roswell what do you think about the you know this this ufo um over chicago um call us at 773-59 weird so <laughs> i'm really pushing the number it's been really exciting to hear from the listeners and i know that i said that we were going to start playing clips this week but um I just didn't do that. It's fine. Life gets weird. It's okay. The planets are all fucked up right now. Just leave me alone. It's it's okay. That's what they keep saying. <laughs> they are. They they really are. That's They're all what fucked that up. other Ashley keeps telling me. I'm oh. promising you, us Ashleys. We know. Okay, we know stuff, and we we are a collective. And um, I believe. I honestly, I I believe it. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. Yeah. Us Ashes, we are, we are all one. We are sent here to take over. You are legion. We are. <laughs> and, uh, you know, but no, the planets are all fucked up. So if, if you've been feeling bad lately, I don't care. You could say you don't believe in astrology. I don't give a shit. You're wrong. Astrology is just another form of astronomy it, and, and, and physics. It's just fucking numbers. And, and they're right. I mean, it's the facts. Whatever. So <laughs> eventually it'll get better. Um, but yeah. So anyway. That was it. And then one other thing I want to touch upon real quick. It's not necessarily news news, but I think it's worth mentioning because uh, I want to mention it. This season of American Horror Story has um, has two plot lines. The, the first half of the season was all about vampires, coincidentally enough. The second half now is about UFOs and uh, most importantly, the supposed treaty 
between Eisenhower and uh, the aliens back in the early 50s. Have you heard of that theory? We got to talk about that one day. Yeah, and it's, but this, talk about it. Watch watch this season of American Horror Story. This is not an advertisement, although Ryan Murphy, I will take your money and your your adrenochrome. (laughs) But, uh, (laughs) because I know you got a stash. Uh, But no, this this season is, uh, man, it is, it's really, really fucking good. And, um, when I was first exposed to that theory, I had read it in um, Bill Cooper's Behold a Pale Horse, which I don't know if we, we've spent a whole lot of time talking about on the show, but it was one of the first um, kind of self-published uh, conspiracy occult tomes that came out. It came out in the early, like, I think, 91 it came out, which is right around the same time Coast to Coast came out, too. And, it's very uh, much a classic if you're into this kind of stuff. Yeah, I mean, I read it. I read it probably ninety four. I read it very early on, and it was a total deep dive. So Bill Cooper, he was uh, ex Navy intelligence, and claims that this book is like kind of a collection of uh, every chapter is about something a little bit different. He the book goes all over the place, but um, a lot of stuff he supposedly came across during his time in the military, either directly, like he was involved in something, he was involved in a, a, a case or a project or something. Or he happened across documents just by being in the military. And one of the chapters suppo- has uh, has some stuff that he says that he found in a copy machine at work, which who knows if that's fucking true or not. But uh, so some of the shit's kind of goofy. But some of the stuff is very, 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 very interesting. And it, it spends a lot of time. The, the, the main, I guess, explanation that he has for aliens is uh, this Eisenhower theory. And, and this, how the story goes is that the aliens came and met with Eisenhower in, in the early 1950s and said, look, we want to abduct 5,000 Americans a year. And we want, to, we want you to facilitate this. We want you to allow it to happen. And in return, we are going to give you access to our technology. And if you say no to us, we're going to go to the Russians with the same deal. And America said, um, you know, obviously, and, and, and this season of American Horror Story deals with the conflict that Eisenhower had about what to say. And, you know, do I turn my people over? You know, do I doom thousands to save millions and that whole fucking thing? That's but terrible. basically that the government went along with it and entered into a uh, joint uh, program with the extraterrestrials. And that's what the abduction phenomenon was. And that's why sometimes they report seeing humans in the vicinity or, you know, whatever. And all of this was to, uh, it's why how the men in black are, are involved and all that stuff. All of this was to build a hybrid. Uh, it was a hybrid program, hybridization program. Right. And so that is the basis of this theory. And, um, you know, I'm not sure the show is still ongoing, so I don't know where they're going to take it. Where Bill Cooper took it was that this program worked until about the late 70s, early 80s, when the United States discovered that uh, the aliens were taking more people than they were supposed to, that they were killing some people and not returning them at all, and that um, basically they had been lied to. And at that point, a battle actually broke out and uh, and this battle happened at one of the research facilities in Dulce, New Mexico, which you've heard us talk about a couple times on the show, the Dulce Archuleta base. And uh, then that happened and that kind of led to a um, kind of a, a separation f- with, from the government and the aliens. Okay. Which I don't know necessarily how true any of this is. Cause I have zero proof. I'm just listening to stories and trying to rank their believability. But what's kind of interesting is that if you look at what's happening now with the government kind of inching towards disclosure of something, it could be, are they, are they now trying to come out with this? Are they trying to, are they, are they done hiding it where they were obvious, where they were clearly trying to hide it for a while and now they're not so much anymore. Is is that it? Did the aliens leave and then come back? You know, it's, it's interesting to consider just from a, just, as something to wrap your head around. It's interesting to consider that this story has evolved over the decades. Oh yeah. Right. That the reason the UFO phenomenon has changed from the fifties to the sixties, to the seventies, to the eighties, to the nineties, to today is because there have been geopolitical things happening. 
right? Because you do have, you know, this happening with the Russian government or this happening with the Chinese and, or this happening with, uh, you know, the treaty between the aliens and the humans. And, you know, that's why this, there, there are certain aspects of this phenomenon that have been consistent for centuries, but there's also a lot that's kind of really seemed to change over the past couple decades and an evolving, um, you know, political, uh, that, that might, that might explain why. So lots of stuff to think about this season of American Horror Story. Sorry. <laughs> kind of, kind of weird... I forgot we were talking about that for a minute. <laughs> right. I did too. <laughs> I had to bring it back around. That's no, oh, that's a good point. No, that's okay. All right. I've never watched American Horror Story ever. Never. Um, not not one up not one season. <laughs> you would I think you would like it. Listeners, if you think she would like it, definitely chime in on Twitter and tell her to watch it. Tell her what season you think is her favorite. Because no, all the seasons are standalone. If you think I would like it, then you can call us at seven seven three five nine weird and let me know. <laughs> no, uh, no, I, I I keep hearing that everybody says I would like it, and and but then other people are like, well, it depends on the season, and right, you know, yeah. I just I don't get to watch a lot of things in general. Um, we just actually I I'm getting in early enough. Um, I've been watching Squid Game, and I I'm enjoying it so far. So. Um, but I hear it's sad, and I'm scared. So, <laughs> See, I, I, know. I, I My my wife and my kid are watching that. I'm not watching that. So it's you, you know what? That's the fucked up thing. That's how I got into it. Was because my kid stumbled upon some videos about it, and she wanted to watch it. And I'm like, it's not for kids. <laughs> she's like, she's like, it's fine. I'm like, okay. So I don't. We've been watching it, and it's not kid friendly, but like, it's not terrible. It's not. You know, she's seen worse. So, um, <clears throat> but anyway, so I, I don't. But I don't get to watch a lot of things, and uh, right. You know, that's just, that's one of those things. I feel like, you know, I guess I don't have to watch every season of American Horror Story. I could just jump in where they're at right now, but like. Sure. I mean, there's, it depends. Like there's one, one season's about witches, one season's about, um, there was actually the second season was about UFO abductees and Nazis and all kinds of stuff too. Um, so it's nice to see him coming back to that. Um, one season was about the apocalypse. One season was about uh trump winning the election that was actually one of my favorite ones it wasn't as supernatural but he does a lot of stuff he does a lot of kitchen stink shit where like they throw in like fucking everything you could possibly but it's all kinky and dirty and you'd like the aesthetic i really like ryan murphy i like what he comes up with and um you know i don't watch a lot of tv either but it's 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 honestly one of those shows that i i make the time for when it's on you know because it it very rarely disappoints it's not always groundbreaking excellent tv but it's it's very rarely boring. That's a very good uh, endorsement. I'm excited that ch- the um, Chucky series premieres. Uh, yes, that's that's um, like tomorrow. Tom- tomorrow, but yesterday. Well, yes, yesterday. Tomorrow. Sorry. Um, yeah. So I mean, that comes out this week. That I'm excited. I'll be watching that. Um, yeah. I I did jump in on Stranger Things early on, and I really like it. Yeah. Um, so I mean, you know, I, I get to catch some things every once in a while, but uh, do Jennifer Tilly back on TV again? Oh fuck yeah! Listen, well, so I'm oh. not here for it. That's right. I like the direction the series is going. Um, but uh, anyway, this isn't about movies. Um, well, okay, it kind right. of is. It kind of is. Um, but not really. Um, so let's 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 get into the topic. Sure. <laughs> So anyway, um, it's, you know, it's spooky season, guys. Um, you know, we did uh, Possession last week. And this week, we're going to talk to you about uh, real real life uh, instances of vampires. So, um, Pat, what do you know about vampires? <laughs> Just in general, what do you know about it? Dude, that's I didn't know you were doing that. I talked about like the Toadies album, Possum Kingdom. <laughs> I have the most random vampire notes. I was high as fuck when I came up with all this stuff. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, what did you just ask me? What do you know about vampires? What do I know about vampires? Um, they were I movies. I really liked them growing up. Uh, I really liked vampire movies. They were probably my favorite horror movie for a while until I kind of discovered zombies in the mid '90s before the you know the big zombie comeback explosion of Twenty Eight Days Later and and the Dawn of the Dead remake. But yeah, vampires were you know always go to horror villains um yeah i didn't think they were uh kind of now i know they're kind of seen as being like femi or like overly dramatic or just kind of like eh um i always thought they were cool i love fright night too that was probably my one of my favorite movies growing up okay Uh, um another one sundown vampire and retreat which was this really obscure it's it's not obscure because i mean bruce campbell's in it 
but basically it's about vampires that live in this town and they try to synthesize blood so that they don't have to eat humans and there's other vampires that like eating humans and it's kind of like a western but it's very like tongue-in-cheek but as a kid like it wasn't super scary so i could watch it it was kind of funny um so yeah i I was a big fan of horror movies in general so vampires and uh yeah i've always kind of you know been up there especially when you're a weird kid you know right right one of those things well i mean what do you think about these people that run around um drinking people's blood and claiming to be vampires i get it i mean um, okay (laughs) <laughs> I don't do it, but I mean, that I almost, I stopped myself just short of saying this, you know, 30 seconds ago that I'm sure when I was a kid having a, uh, <laughs> the type of fucked up childhood that only somebody that provided the past half hour of podcast content could have had, um, <laughs> that's, I'm sure there was some night that I went to bed wishing that I was a fucking vampire or something, you know what oh, I mean? Yeah, like, definitely. um, I, I thought that it was, you know, yeah, you'd have to live at night. And you couldn't go out during the day, but fuck going out during the day. That's when you had to go to school or whatever. And, um, you know, I don't think I necessarily wanted to be 11 for the rest of my life. But, like, you know, in a lot of ways, I'm a perpetual 17-year-old. Well, I mean, so, you know, in case... And I'm sure everybody's watched something on TV or YouTube or something. By now, I mean, if you're a fan of this show, you're probably into some spoopy stuff. And that's fine. Um, You know, I'm, I'm sure you've seen the cases of these people who this kind of vampire culture who you know again they they drink blood you know regularly and they claim to be vampires and they'll go and have their teeth filed or whatever you know and they do their thing new orleans actually new orleans new orleans is new orleans is that strictly new orleans. Like new orleans but is is orleans the midwestern way to say it <laughs> yeah is that just me um but uh there's a big there's a big vampire culture there um you know actually they have a big group but you know what i didn't really realize and like i had i had heard the term psychic vampire before which is not a good thing it's not a good thing right like if somebody's a psychic vampire it's a bad thing because they're like draining you of your energy and like making you feel negatively about things because it creates more energy and it and it feeds them somehow but this is Mm -hmm. all very metaphysical and metaphorical um you know realistically but when i started re- researching for this episode to look into these real life vampires you know i realized that there's different ones i mean there's definitely um you know somebody there's vampires that have different needs like i shit you not i was reading this article and it was like interviewing these, this group of vampires and the one guy's like i like to hug that's what i feed on is hugs and i'm like okay all right and that's cool like <laughs> there's tantric vampires and then i was like oh that might be me (laughs) it means that 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 you if you don't know that means that you uh you feed off of sex and having sex and intimacy and things like that um you know there's different forms of vampirism i had no clue that uh it had evolved into this big of a thing i you know i don't know um but you know i've never been that person like yeah i've always been like super edgy or whatever as a kid growing up but even like in my younger like more adventurous days i was never like like i have adult friends now that are like oh yeah one time me and somebody we were just cutting each other during sex and it was just so cool i've never been that person like that's not yeah i've dated those girls before and i don't and i don't understand the appeal like they're probably those people that say that they're probably like closer to my age than yours maybe random guess no no oh, your age because the, the the vampire thing did get really big in the late 80s uh early 90s when with like the goth industrial scene kind of backing it up a little bit um you know you had a lot of uh you had like the lost boys and yeah you know, i mean so you know, the, vampire you know you things had that, that in the 80s of, and then yeah, yeah and you had just the 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 goth and like the kind of not the darker side of new wave music and that all kind of lended itself to that if you look at the chicago music scene and what we were doing stuff like ministry and and industrial and and nine inch nails and shit um that was all really popular and that you know whole lifestyles pop up around that kind of music and that kind of culture and people you know it goes from what they're listening to to how they're dressing to how they're living to what they're you know all that stuff it's it's kind of a a cascading thing and um 
I mean, I talk about D and D all the time, but you know, an- another big if it's crazy if you actually listen to this week's uh, or last week's uh, people who make stuff with TPK Mike, we spend a lot of time talking about the Vampire Masquerade game and how you know D and D gets such a bad rap for people that like to get lost in the game and act it out in real life. But if you want to talk about a role playing game where you have people do that more than anything else, it's fucking Vampire the Masquerade. Okay, seriously. The people people love to LARP that game. LARP is live action role play. Even like when we had Tobias Waylet on, he was kind of talking. You guys were kind of talking. We were doing that after the show. After we were talking show, shit. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah talking talking shit about people. <laughs> No, well, you weren't talking yeah. shit about people because you don't no, get you that but... listen you don't you don't get people say people mi- incorrectly attribute that to D D all the time it's not D D. it's fucking vampire and the masquerade those are the only people that do like so and i shouldn't say the only but by and large if you put 10 of them in a room nine out of them would be fucking vampire and masquerade players well, but there's like the difference between my role-playing game and my role-playing game well you know but it, that's because people get there's something about that lifestyle there's something about that you know um that no, it's I understand. Almost, you it's know, like it's there's, because, a, there's a difference between cryptozoology, ufology, and the paranormal. They're not the same thing, right? But I think I think with the attraction to the vampire thing, and if you look at why why nerds are going to LARP vampire more than they're going to LARP Dungeons and Dragons, is because there's an inherent uh, like emo side that I think people like to have an excuse to express, right? LARPing and like role playing is all about having a vehicle for express things that you can't express who you really are right i can't be this person in real life so i'm gonna pretend to be this character that gets to do all the things that i wish i could do as my 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 like core persona or something right so when when people larp vampires if they do it in a game setting or i think in these cults that we're talking about i think it's because vampires are inherently two things right besides fucking blood suckers and 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 like monsters right but they're inherently dark and brooding and like deep and like you know whatever and they're also very sexual okay and if you have a lot of like angsty emotion or like broodiness that you have you don't know how to let out without seeming like ridiculous or if like you're really horned up and you want an excuse to let a bunch of dudes fucking like you know, you want to wear a corset and go to a party and have a bunch of dudes fucking choke up all over. You know, like this is a way to do that. Um, that's my read on it, at least. Wow. Well, OK. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. But like we're talking. But now, I mean, how does that translate to this people joining whole fucking clubs dedicated to strictly being a vampire? I mean, what is it? Is this just adults playing dress up? I don't get it. Yeah. Well, I don't think they're really vampires. Well, they're well, obviously not really vampires, but like, they're, I mean, they're drinking blood. We know enough. We know enough about magic in general to know that if you have a bunch of people that are really believing something, and they're fucking around with blood and all this other stuff, that yeah, they could be you know uh, moving energy around. I guess is probably a good way to put it. They could like, be. Sure. I'm not saying it's totally devout of devoid of of having uh, some kind of power, but. Yeah, I don't think they're fucking floating through the air and shit. They're not levitating or turning into a bat. Well, I mean, when I turned that, when I turned, when I read that that guy feeds off of hugs, it really dawned on me. That's that one weirdo. Just, <laughs> well, but it's not, though, because then that got me interested and I started reading about others. It's just the one that sticks out the most. Um, they kind of all have their things that they feed on, is what they say. They feed on that. So you're just, it's just something that you really, really like. I think, well, first of all, psychic vampires are 100% real because I've known a lot of those in my day. Um, yeah, but I don't think they're not aware. Like, they're not like, oh, I'm a psychic vampire. Like, it's just that they right. they are. Well, but, I mean, how, how blind can you really be? If, 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 if you have this way about you that's been that way your whole entire life, because some of these people I've known for over a decade, and they're, they suck the life out of the room then and they suck the life out of the room now, and I fucking picked up on it. And they got to walk around like that shit every day. You tell me they don't know about it either. Maybe they do. Maybe they don't. You know, there's a reason people are like, oh, I, you always make me feel better when I call you. And it's like, uh, yeah, but you make me feel worse. And so now I want to go take a nap because it's fucking exhausting. Like, like you don't pick up on that power exchange. And that's and let, let's just put it like that. Like, because we're not talking about magic and woo woo shit. But like just that, that energy exchange, you know. Where like, yes, they're feeding off you. And it happens in a lot of different ways. But I, but I can't believe that. If, if the person being drained 
feels it. How does the person doing the draining not feel it either? Yeah. Well, uh, well, and you're right. I mean, but they, I don't, I still don't think they're aware that they're doing it. I don't know. I just think that they prefer to be miserable and that's why they are the way they are. And for whatever reason, you know, there's just people like that. And we all know somebody like that. When, when I say psychic vampire, everybody's like, oh yeah, you know, <laughs> everybody yeah. knows exactly who the fuck you're talking about. And, uh, you know, so we all know somebody like that, but they're not going around acknowledging like to themselves even like i'm not saying they're gonna tell other people obviously because then that ruins their their feeding but uh you know they're not sitting at home and they're like yeah i'm a psychic vampire well they're they probably don't... in denial about a lot of things which is why they're so miserable in the first place right. i mean it's like <laughs> yeah they're not exactly yeah, self-actualized by any stretch of the imagination sure you know and, you know so i mean yeah they're i mean it's 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 a real concept but you know as an actual like vampire no and i'm not saying like don't get me wrong like i'm definitely not saying that anybody that subscribes to the idea of vampirism i'm not saying that you're bad people like it's just i don't get it i don't understand um, no you know is it just because you want to belong to something that you then turn your interest and in things that you generally like into because even like tantric vampires are like oh i you know i i feed off of sex i get this you know extra fulfillment out of sex a lot of us do like yeah, I, I don't i don't know right. am i am i not getting as much out of fucking as i could be because i'm getting a lot out of it now right exactly <laughs> i mean so, is there some know. extra level that i i i am not am i not doing something right am I right are you, i mean is that does that make you i mean are you a vampire because you like to have i don't know you know that's that's strange and so you know why is it just to, to be exclusive to the club is it you know what obviously there's something more there than to just be like i'm a vampire i mean you know there's something more to it than just you know these these blood sucking creatures of the night you know that's not, obviously that's not real um yeah. but, i mean well let's know. let's rewind a little bit because i think i kind of derailed this <laughs> into being like a, a like a coherent like straightforward like taking out of the vampire yeah. the psychic stuff but just going to like people that um that actually do kind of do the vampire cult thing that is real okay um, and that's something that that happens, you know, like, like with blood, with bloodletting, with consensual victims, with sometimes with non-consensual victims. And it's a very safe. No, not it's never non-consensual. Well, I mean, unless they're we'll talk about non-consensual anyway. Right, talk about like the Ripper crew and shit like that was kind of like weird cannibalism, vampirism shit. I don't know if they said they were vampires, but like definitely you can get a you can get a couple serial killers or something operating in that, you know. And well, I'm, I'm I'm gonna talk yeah I'm gonna talk about one here in a minute but um no I mean but let's not we can't put those into the same group of people because that's not fair the people that we're talking about these people I was like I was reading about it and these people like even like the quote unquote donors is what they call them like they're very <laughs> clean like it's not typically unless you're like partnered up with somebody like you're the vampire and like you end up getting into a relationship with somebody that just like understands that you are like really like people come they donate blood to this type of thing they'll drink the blood it's not typically like mouth to skin like it's all very clean and done in a very correct way um so it's really impressive the way that they've they've gotten their operation together <laughs> to be honest <laughs> with you um but no it is it is it is a real thing that people do um like i said i'm sure anybody has probably read something or heard something or watched something about this particular topic um but no it is it is very real and it's not scary it's not even scary you guys it's 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 legit like you can donate blood to a vampire if you want to and in new orleans but um but let's talk about some something that is scary you know kind of real life uh instances i want to talk about one um that um i'm going to talk about this guy and uh he's fucking crazy he's nuts but a very interesting case um a lot of people have have heard of him um his name is richard trenton chase have you heard of this guy no um they call him the vampire of sacramento um, pretty recent actually he killed six people in 1960 or i'm sorry 1976 within like a month span um but this dude was just crazy so um you know he ended up you know just kind of having a weird uh start in life anyway um he was obviously very mentally ill and you know before he started killing people he would make crazy claims like he was convinced that someone stole his artery and he was just obsessed absolutely obsessed with blood and um you know he would do crazy shit like he go 
um, you know, he would mutilate animals and, you know, steal their blood and things like that. Like he ended up um, being institutionalized before he started killing people. He was institutionalized for a bit um, where he like stole syringes and like took blood from the therapy dogs at the hospital um, so that he could ingest it or whatever it was he did with it. All kinds of crazy stuff. And then he went on this, um, you know, this crazy bender where he just decided to start killing people. And uh, it was very gruesome. Um, you know, there was necrophilia and cannibalism involved with the people that he killed. Now, one crazy thing about him is that, like, he would go up, like I said, he only killed six people, um, but he would go up to people's houses and he would try to open the door. And if the door was locked, he would leave because he said that a locked door meant that he wasn't invited in, but an unlocked door meant that he was invited to go in. He could go in. It was fine. Mm. And uh, so... <laughs> it gets it gets really crazy um he ended up going on this this really crazy like he killed like a whole family of people or something it was awful it was just absolutely horrible but he left behind a whole bunch of evidence because again the guy's fucking nuts um and you know the police found him pretty quickly but when they went to his residence to arrest him everything everything in this man's house was covered in blood nobody really knows where he got the blood from Nobody really knows what was going on. Actually, as a matter of fact, when he was institutionalized, I believe it was because he was arrested and um, because he was caught carrying a literal bucket of blood down the street. Um, they yeah, that's out. a red flag. Yeah, yeah, right. They found out it was cow's blood. Um, but, I mean, he was just absolutely insane about this. So, you know, in prison, you know, they sentenced him to death. They told him, you know, to die by the gas chamber. The other inmates were scared of this man. And let me tell you, he's just a scrawny fucking dude. Like, he wasn't anything, you know. And he, and he was crazy. I mean, he used to keep his head shaved because he was convinced that, like, you know, you're, like, your skull has different plates in it, right? And they fuse together. Babies, they're not fused yet. It takes a while, but they fuse together eventually. But he, he was convinced that his weren't fused together, so he had to keep his head shaved so that he could, like, watch the plates and make sure they were okay and things like that. He was crazy. So the inmates were scared of him. The guys kept trying to convince him to kill himself all the time. And um, he ended up doing an interview with, um, I don't know who it was, to be honest with you, but he did this interview and, you know, he was telling them that, you know, he feels bad. He had to kill people, but he had to kill people because of the Nazis and their UFOs and they, he had to kill people. It was either he killed people or they would kill him. Um, he was convinced that they were poisoning his food uh constant everybody in prison and this this guy that he did the interview with uh he ended up pulling macaroni and cheese out of his pants and trying to like give the guy some it's not i swear to god fucking crazy but oh what you don't do that no no i keep sauerkraut in my fanny pack (laughs) (laughs) but it's like a civilized person (laughs) but uh (laughs) <laughs> anyway but no i mean he definitely um you know he was all into drinking blood and and using blood but again the claim was because you know at the end of the day it was likely because he thought that his artery was missing and that you know he had to continue to ingest blood or he would die he thought he would die it's crazy he's a crazy guy um uh, but that's that's uh richard tritton chase he's um who he's a character he's scary he scared me that's why i keep my doors locked all the time because fuck that yeah, I mean, rule of thumb, thumb it's not a bad idea anyway you, know? you should all right you should always lock your doors but if you didn't have a reason before it's because if you don't crazy people that are killing people because of the nazi aliens are gonna walk into your house and and kill you and drink your blood so i mean now when you hear stuff like that does it register to you at all that this guy would probably be one of our listeners no i don't think you think our <laughs> listeners would you think he would be well he, he was in the nazi ufos and conspiracy yeah i think you're right oh my gosh <laughs> not not so you're opposed it's yeah like, i uh i don't know whenever when you brought that up that that kind of took the wind out of my sails a little bit <laughs> <laughs> cut a little too close to home i'm like all right i'm not, not gonna laugh at this guy because i mean i got done talking <laughs> about eisenhower and fucking american <laughs> horror story and, <laughs> well, a, i mean but does, has somebody Ryan Murphy stolen and a are you are you are you drinking blood because your artery is missing no, it's because sure? it's there. Yeah, but like, would you tell me if you were? No, I've never. Um, you know, I'm not, definitely not squeamish at the sight of blood, but I've I've never gotten the urge to necessarily taste it. I've never been. Um, you know, some guys are, are really grossed about uh, women's stuff, and like that never bothered me at all. But never to the point where I I could see myself 
not, I have zero interest in it. Does not interest me at all. Blood and yeah, and, and well, blood you know, magic and all that stuff of, does not. It's just kind of part. I mean, you know, it's like one of those things. Like other people, like like you cut yourself. You get a paper cut, right? So you lick it. Okay. Yeah. I mean, sure, but there's a big difference between that and like just straight up pouring a nice cold glass of. Well, I don't think it went, you want it to be cold because it coagulates, but sure. you know, a glass of blood and just straight up drinking it. But some cultures eat like blood and and use it in cooking and and things right. like that. So. Um, even animal blood. I mean, the Irish do right. that, and the Scottish do that. They do, right? I, I just, I never, I never saw. I don't know. I think there's something that's that's the thing about the vampires. Like as cool as they were, I think that was always my disconnect with them. You know, um, mythologically, is that there's nothing appealing from me that nothing appeals to me that the requirement of me having to drain something from somebody else. You know what I mean? Like that's too malicious. That's too negative. You, if the person's willing, like I don't know, then it'd have to be some be some really weird kinky shit. You know? I mean, I think even if the person's willing, like I'm not, so I, I don't know. It's just not something that I'm interested in personally. If, if a partner wanted to bite you or anything, would you? You know? No, I don't like pain like that. Yeah, I'm I'm just not really into that. Like, I know people think that I'm probably like super super kinky, and like I guess I can be, but like I I don't know. I don't want to hurt. Like, the, I have sex because it feels good, <laughs> like not because it right. feels bad. You know, um, I'm I'm not one of those people. I mean, I will hurt someone if you if you want me to hurt you, I'll do that. But yeah, that's always mm-hmm. like the, a bigger a bigger turn off for me is like if I'm in bed with a partner for the first time, they're like choke me, and I'm like, oh fuck, I thought you were cool for a second. Now you're one of these people. <laughs> You're gonna make me like what, leave a lot of physical evidence on you right now. I don't feel like to a certain like, extent, you know. I'm yeah. not completely vanilla. I'm interested in some things, but like, no, you want to fucking bite into my skin until I bleed? No, that fucking sucks. Have you ever had children? My kid fucking bit me once. You know what I did? I bit her back. <laughs> I did. She never bit me again. I didn't bite right. her hard, but no, that shit fucking sucks. Like, no, thank right. you. Like, that's terrible. You know, but uh, no, I mean, like I said, it, it's not something that I'm into, um, and not something that I understand. I'm not here to kink shame. You right, know, if, exactly. If, if you're into that, by all means, and as long as you're doing it with a consenting, you know, adult, that's fine. Um, well, maybe it's know. a build off of the whole cutter thing too. You know what I mean? Because that was, I was never into that either. Yeah, I, I. I dated a lot of girls that were. That was an, I don't know if, but that's the thing is that I don't know if I can attribute to it being fifteen, me being fifteen, hanging out with fifteen year old girls, or if that's just what the nineties were like. No, I mean it was definitely like a lot of cutters in in my time, and I mean when we were in high school, it was the early two thousands. So yeah, but I feel like there there's also like this thing about like hole was really big and like watching the crow and like hole nails. Yeah, hole? like Courtney Love Band. Yeah. I had no idea that was the thing. You don't know who Courtney Love is? I know who Courtney Love is. I didn't know that she was in a band called Hole. What the fuck? Oh my god! <laughs> I no idea. I, I, it, listeners, listeners, listeners. I, I'm sorry that all of you just simultaneously spilled your drinks at once when she said that. <laughs> I know you're like your your heads fucking. <laughs> like it, it's almost a thousand so voices were silenced at once. <laughs> and when they're like, "What? Who the fuck do you think Courtney Love is?" I I she was uh you know Kurt Cobain's she killed right. Kurt Cobain. Well, no, I'll do take. I mean, that's all. That, honestly, we should do that show sometime. But um, no, nah, no, she was in a band called Hole, and um, look, their first album. Is it good? Yeah. Well, the first two albums are pretty good, and I don't even know if. Well, I'm talking about the one with uh, "Live Through This," which is the one that had like Violet. And, and doll parts and uh, uh jennifer's body and yeah jennifer's body is based on a whole song that's where the title is at least. now maybe i do know about this i just didn't realize it was called whole yeah and then the second album was uh celebrity skin and that was when she was looking real pretty and she got out of rehab but billy corgan wrote most, most of that album whereas uh supposedly kurt cobain wrote most to live through this but um yeah so that was like the aesthetic back then for like you know, and that was one of the things that I actually want to talk about in some of the research I did was um, vampires in 90s alternative music. So one of the um, most notable cases that when, when you talked about this that first came to my mind was uh, the band The Toadies and their album Possum Kingdom. Or actually, the album uh, is called Rubbernecking. 
but the toadies were a band from texas and uh the song possum kingdom which is like their big hit like if you heard it you would recognize it that's the one song that everyone knows by them uh is all about this lake in tyler texas called hell's gate and there's all kind of weird shit that happens around it and uh, at the time there were rumors of a vampire cult operating out of that area and um it was it was kind of like that was you know so if this album came out in 94 they were writing about stuff that was happening in the early early 90s and i feel like we were still in that 80s satanic panic mode you know what i mean and whether or not this stuff was actually real there was definitely rumors of it going around you know and the toadies wrote this song about it and then whenever they did interviews for mtv or local radio station they said so what's the song possum kingdom about it and well possum kingdom is this this lake this area in tyler texas and there's this rock formation called hell's gate and you know lots of weird shit happens around it and the lyrics of the song are about of a, a, a vampire stalking a, his prey and kind of convincing her to walk with him behind the, by the lake tonight or whatever. I'm going to start doing the lyrics okay. and shit. But um, yeah. so, yeah, so I mean, it was something that was, it, it was, this stuff was kind of represented in pop culture a little right. bit. Um, there was also Concrete Blonde and their, their album Bloodletting. And Concrete Blonde, um, Bloodletting obviously is, is the act of feeding. Um, usually letting uh, a willing participant feeding a vampire and that's that's the name of their mm-hmm. album and that's not what i thought bloodletting was oh what was your bloodletting is when you have someone fucking bleed to death like it's a form of torture it's a form of uh medieval torture where you have you cut them open they bleed to death slowly well, gonna, i will not argue with you there in the, <laughs> well, in the context of concrete blonde well, vampires yeah i guess yeah, it slight, slightly like less uh nihilistic approach and uh the the song that everyone knows off that album is joey which doesn't really have anything to do with vampires but uh is it's not about a vampire were... named joey may no he's an alcoholic oh we still get still he's feeding on uh alcohol he's an he's right a... well yeah the alcohol could be a uh a metaphor <laughs> for for uh blood or something but blood yeah he's having some red wine it's fine <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Um, but no you're uh well okay very interesting um but, but i think you're right vampires are definitely um a form of mass hysteria they, they tend to come and go in, in waves right they become really popular for a time being i mean the most recent most notable which i know people are gonna be like ooh, is, is twilight you know and it's definitely it continues to evolve right over the years and um but as far as like a cultural standpoint um it's just nowadays we have it more so in pop culture than we do in within our because there there was once a time in people's everyday ordinary lives where they feared vampires because they thought that they were real um you know because you would have instances you know we just we talked about the chupacabra i mean you have fucking cattle coming up with all their blood drained and, and weird shit you know what i mean i've i've had people i've had one person i shouldn't say people i had one person report a vampire sighting to me really what did they um, what was that um so they were actually in uh in new orleans and uh <laughs> new, new orleans and uh they were walking down the street with a date and they were being followed by some guy now they said that this was the 80s and a lot of people were you know, performance artists at the time. It was really late. They went on, you know, had gone on a date, and uh, there, there was this guy dressed up kind of weird. He was wearing a top hat. He looked weird, you know, but that's kind of how those people dress around there. And uh, he said that they had crossed the street, and when they turned around, the guy had cleared basically an impossible distance and had gotten even closer to them. So they kept walking towards the car. Um, by the time they got to the car, this particular individual had a gun in his, in his car. So he was getting the gun out of the car, and um, when he turned around to, like, go shoot at the guy because he was trailing them, the girl that he was on his date put her hands to her face and was just in pure shock and awe because she said, that man just disappeared. And he was gone. He was gone. There was nobody there. He said it was impossible for this person to have just ran away. He couldn't duck behind anything. He just straight up fucking disappeared. And that was it. That was it. So... I mean, you know, and then again, I mean, that was the 80s. I mean, shit, when you think about it, that was 40 years ago. <laughs> but, you know, so, I mean, but I did. But you, I did. Well, I'm sorry. Did you like the Twilight movies? I never watched them. <sighs> Honey. I've never seen them. 
We need if if we had let's not do Crypticon. Oh let's, fuck that! I'm not. Let's kidding. watch Twilight and listen no. to whole an, no. an, an American Horror Story. No, you don't know me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just have like uh, I'm gonna bring an iPad with me and just have them streaming at all times. Well, so that's what, fine because like, what's their name? The fucking the Manic Pixie Dream Goals. They love Twilight, so. They're like obsessed with Twilight and they're always talking about Twilight and I just I'm always so lost and I feel like I should know. Throwing shade. Well, I feel like I'm not throwing shade. I'm just saying they really no, it's fine. I mean they love Twilight. I'm saying I feel lost because I feel like I'm supposed to be like I'm supposed to be in the know and I No, don't it's campy as fuck. I don't I I mean I like it. I'm a free old guy. I like it for all the wrong reasons. I like because I laugh at it. Uh I definitely like it better than the underworld movies because underworld movies try too hard and take themselves too seriously. Uh, Twilight's kind of a fucking joke, I mean, especially some when people the... really like Twilight. I mean, the fact of the matter is, Twilight. If you're a fucking, because this is mostly the people I see about it. If you're a grown ass man bitching because vampires don't sparkle and like you hate it, well, let me tell you something. Twilight wasn't written for you. It was written for teenage girls, right? So you're not supposed to like it. Well, I... so you know, there. So stop being a fucking edgy edge lord and just fucking accept the fact that it exists for teenagers. <laughs> no, I'm like, anyway. I, I'm glad I have a teenage girl because I honestly like, I I don't necessarily like everything that is geared towards teenage girls but i find it funny like i just i don't know like the twilight stuff like when i was younger i used to read ym like i think there's just something about that like teenage girl aesthetic like it's it's almost like ridiculous how they talk down to and like what they what they feel like teenage they, girls should oh, be yeah, into they really do yeah. that like as like a dude you're just like oh my god this is fucking terrible <laughs> you know <laughs> and then you just kind of get a kick out of it anyway but <clears throat> excuse me um you know i gotta say there, there was something like totally comforting about doing the uh the show topic on vampires this week like i didn't expect to connect with this topic as much as i did and i don't know if i accurately represented that in the show prior to this point so i want to i want to do that right now like um i'm definitely like an emo kid at heart and uh i was very down in the dumps this weekend just like we all were like we were talking before the show like it's something going around and do like listening to like fucking vampire music and like doing the research on the show and like just reading all this stuff and coming up with the notes for today's show like it really put me in like a good mindset and it really kind of yeah. made me like happy and i think that um if i start crying i'm gonna blame the protozoan um and i think that like you know there's something about the vampire mythos that connects with us and connects with a part of us and maybe if it doesn't connect with who you are right now it might connect with who you were as a teenager or maybe who you are as an adult going through a midlife crisis or a divorce or something i don't know but my point is is that like like we just were joking about twilight but twilight is twilight for a reason and for my generation buffy was buffy for a reason right and there's a power there and it, it, there's something about it that just clicks with some of us and it clicks very, very strongly. And as much as I kind of dogged on it, um, it, it doing the research on this, this topic this week made me really realize how much of this kind of like, I wasn't a weird vampire kid growing up, but if I hadn't discovered pop punk and no effects, I probably would have been one probably would have been a bigger <laughs> goth kid than I, I ended up being but i discovered skater punk and it just i went in that direction instead oh i definitely don't want to downplay vampirism I, I was that kid in high school i i was reading i have tattoos on my on my leg because they're based off of symbols from a specific vampire series that i was really 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 into and uh so i mean it was it was definitely a very important um you know it was a it was a big staple in my life i had my vampire phase you know yeah. and uh as much as I wasn't like, oh, I'm going to be a vampire when I grow up. I mean, I, I really like them. And I think a lot of people do. And I think it's just one of those things that we're so used to it being in the background. Again, vampires have been around for a long time. It's one of, you know, society's favorite monsters. And it's not going to go anywhere anytime soon. Um, you know, people kind of tend to forget, like, how much of a staple it's been in their lives, you know, throughout the years. I mean, you know, we, we, haven't, we didn't talk about Dracula or anything. We didn't talk about, like, typical vamp, you know representations of vampires and things mm. like that but there's so much um culture in it it is an interesting world and it's fun to, to be able to revisit it sometimes and it's uh, ripe for a reboot 
it absolutely is it's it's coming it'll happen uh, like i said yeah. vampires make their make their rounds every oh about every decade or so they got a new one so yeah it's been just enough time for since the twilight thing for us to bring it back around again and do something fresh and fun with it right. i think sexy no, I agree. adult yeah a little bit, a little bit more grown up <laughs> Some no, little, I, some I little teeth you. to it, you know. I, I agree with you. I agree with you. So I mean, <laughs> no, I, I see what you're saying, and it was kind of fun because this isn't really a, you know, this is definitely outside of my wheelhouse of actual research. And aside from, like I said, I did have a vampire report, but you know, I, I don't really look into stuff like this much. So it is, it has been kind of fun to just kind of enjoy the the spooky October topics and just kind of get away from my my usual mm-hmm. brand of work, you know. So I, I, sure. I'm appreciative as well. <laughs> But I don't have anything else to add. Do you? You, you got more? No, that's it. You're going to end it on those beautiful notes there. Um, mm-hmm. That's fine. Well, okay then. I guess uh, I guess we'll we'll stop. And, uh, you know, what do you guys think about vampires? Um, has that been a staple in your life as well? Or, you know, do you believe that the undead are feasting on, on the living? I don't. Um, but maybe you do. I don't know. Uh, call us and tell us about it. 773-59-BEER. <laughs> And then uh, next week we will have we will start playing these messages. I promise. So look, we look forward to that. And uh, go buy you a fanny pack. And uh, that's all. We'll see you guys next Wednesday. <laughs>